All right, folks, June 9, uh, this is uh, episode 31. Uh, we laid out and cut out the uh, that deflector uh, from our, our box of uh, corn checks or corn flakes or whatever it was. Uh, and, you know, if you make good templates, um, you make good parts. And uh, this thing just drops right in, fits perfect. Right to the edge of each tank. Looks good. It's fitting real good. So what we uh, what, now what we need to do is mount it, make it mountable to the radiator. Uh, we, it's got to be removable. We aren't going to just weld it right on. Uh, what we'll do is on the, on the end of this where it's contacting the radiator itself, we'll, we'll cut some fuel line and put it there just so it doesn't ground out and, and cause any damage to the radiator, right? Because it's going to sit right on the edge of these tanks. Um, so I called Rich over yesterday. He's, uh, he's going to end up having to do this, and uh, we really want to... We wanted to try to stay away from any of the welding that's already been done. Um, because every time he's welded something, he's got near something that was already welded by John or, or whoever he had do it. Um, it caused little, little, really super minute little air, air leaks. So that's why we still got the fittings in. Because when he's done, I'm going to have to air check it again. And it may have to go back. <laughs> it may have to go uh, back for work. Um, in the past, these here, just putting these on. Uh, these the, the the threaded bungs were okay, but patching up the holes where the old uh, aluminum nipples were needed work. And then he got into he got into one of these welds where John put the can onto the header, and it had a little tiny, super tiny little micro little 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 stream of bubbles coming out. So you got you got to fix it. It's it's gotta you know it's it's gotta be it's gotta be airtight. So um, we kind of came up with uh, with this. What we're gonna do is. Um, is uh, we came up with a template. We used the uh, 303090, and uh, we laid one here, there, where, there, there. We made four of them. Um, they're going to go on like so, right? So a little, little tuning, a little sanding and tuning to get it to to fit up flush. But I think we're we're going to be okay with uh, with something like that. One here, one here, uh, and and you know, like I said, we'll have to sand them and, and tune them in because they got to sit over top of this. They're going to get welded on. Um, but what I was uh, trying to shoot for you today was um, the issue we have bending two legs that close together. We're using a vise, um, and to get it—I mean, even bending it over the side of the bench or something like we've done in the past, like we bent this yesterday—it um, it, it offers a, a, a different problem, right? I mean, once you bend the, the first leg. We put this part, the center part, in the vise and bent the first leg. You can bend the 90 in it. But once you try to put the second leg in and bend it over, you can only get so far. You can, <laughs> you can only get so far before it makes contact with the vise, right? So what I wanted to show you uh, before Brother Kenny came in and botched up the video. He didn't know. He, you know, he just came over. He didn't know I was shooting video. So I had to shut it off and start over. I was actually did the bending and I was going to go right into how to get this thing squared up. Um, so I'm, I'll show you right now. Um, uh, the, 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 the real fabricator doesn't need a brake press and all that kind of stuff. What I'm going to do here is show you... What we need is, is, is something the right thickness for the span of these two legs. So what I got here is this piece of aluminum, this solid piece of aluminum, and a couple little pieces of eighth inch that ended up being the right thickness. So we're going to get those all held up next to each other. We're going to put the 90 degree side up against the aluminum there. And then we're going to take a great big vice grip clamp and clamp our little bracket down like so if i can get the thing to play along there we go so we clamp it down like so you see and then we go ahead now that she's good and solid we can just take it and go ahead and i'll even hold you in place so you can see and just go ahead and wrap that bad boy right around Right? Let's pop it off there and see what she looks like. Look at that. Ta-da! So that's, uh, 
you got to get creative when you don't have the big fancy tools. And I'll tell you, even on a brake press, once you bent this first one, you, when you go to bend the second one, this this first leg is going to hit the the die on the brake press. So you you'd have you would have the same problem. You almost need to have a die press that you would push this into. You'd put two 45s in it maybe, and then set it in a die uh, press that has a, a, and you'd push it through, and then have to knock it off. Um, so there you go. Um, there's there's episode 31 in the can. We're bending up some mounts to get, to get our our, uh, our air deflector mounted on. This is the last big piece of of work and fabricating that we have to do the rest of everything else is finished all the stuff was made remember when we went to florida we made up a bunch of stuff not just stuff for rich to weld but i made up the the battery trays um everything that had to do with with the uh, uh the wiring the dashboard was done you saw that maybe in a video earlier so now today now that i got these four things done i'm gonna leave them to rich to 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 finish fit and well done, we'll put the riv nuts on it after, you know, we'll drill the holes and put the riv nuts in after, uh, because we, you know, we don't know, uh, and we got to get the rubber or the fuel line on this, on this thing here. You want everything. You don't want to just mock it like this. You want that, that rubber in because it's going to lift it up the thickness of the wall thickness of the, the fuel line. Uh, so you don't want to transfer any holes or anything like that. We'll go ahead and put the riv nuts in first once it's welded on and we're, we're not leaking any air after we air check. We'll put uh, a riv nut in each one. Let's see if we can get them on there now. Right? Something like that and that. Hmm? What do you think, folks? Not bad. Not bad. That one there needs to be, get, be boost, moved in a little closer. But um, let's try this one up here. Try this one up there. Right? So you, you, you smell what we're cooking here, right? So that's, that's going to hold it in place with rubber around it. Bing, bang, boom. You know, we'll round everything off. It'll look, it'll look trick. Um, that's, you know, that, that's just how you do things. So um, with that being the last piece, once it's uh, uh, fully not, we're, we're convinced it's not going to leak any air, then we'll glue our, our blue 90-degree uh, fittings in like we did on our, on our water tank. On our expansion tank, we glue those in with uh, JB Weld, uh, j just because. Even though they're 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 tapered pipe fittings, um, they go all the you know they'll thread all the way in if you you know once they get tight. So we that's just another thing we do at RPM. We glue those things in that way. We know they will not leak. No leaky, no problems, right? The water tank after being welded had the white plugs in it and it was submerged and we. We made sure that that didn't leak anything, but we'll go ahead and glue these in where they need to go. Here's our battery trays right here. We got battery trays. We have, uh, we're going to drill and tap. We have the bevel headed bolts. We're going to countersink. We got uh, the acetal plastic that will drill and tap, put bolts up from underneath the floor tray bolts down through here and then we'll put the rubber over top they we already pre-fit the batteries fit awesome super tight and nice everything's sitting here waiting to go back on that rear bumper now that it's all welded up we're going to get the 90 grinder and the uh the scotch bright pad and just clean it all up get it nice shiny and clean back on the bumper goes permanently done and done uh patrick sent us some photos today of the bodywork uh all re in red clear coated sitting out in his driveway baking in the sun the only piece he had left to paint and he was doing today was the wing element he had had it all in primer uh probably block blocking it down and saying i mean that stuff i mean just the pictures i can see it's gonna look awesome it's just gonna look awesome so the only thing that's probably gonna hold this thing up from getting delivered to mid ohio is the end plates for the wing um We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, no promises. No promises. Uh, um, I talked John out of racing it down there, so... God forbid. I mean, I really want to get it to him at Mid-Ohio, but um, if we don't, we don't. You know, we got to meet him somewhere else or drive it to Chicago or something, you know? Um, I hate Chicago. 
Uh, there isn't enough money to, to get me to, to drive through there again, but uh, we'll just have to see how it works out. But um, we're plugging away. We're, we're, we're doing everything we, we, we physically, ably can. So, um, And it looks like we're going to get real close. Stay tuned, because you just don't know. Number 31 is in the hole, in the can. We'll talk to you all later. Godspeed, God bless. We're praying for you.